What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Worship Matters. I'm Jonathan, and today we're going to be listening to a song called Rescue by Jordan St. Sear, Sir, Cure. I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce it. Sorry. <laughs> um, before we jump into that, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. If you enjoy this video, give us a like. And if you have any songs you want me to review in the uh, uh, coming days let me know in the comments i'd love to check it out let's hop into it all right here is our worship guidelines directional musically repeatable theologically sound the bob test artistic license and congregational versus personal if you don't know what any of that means i did a whole video about it you can check it out link will be in the description let's do this thing all right our verse for the day psalm 34 uh, we'll start in verse 6. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him, there is no want. Praise the Lord. All right. So, we have been listening to top Christian songs on his radio. <laughs> uh, this is a, a local Christian channel that I've listened to since I was a kid. Um, I, I don't know how local they are. It's just local to me. Um, but... Uh, on here, they have number 15. I saw this uh, song I haven't heard before, Rescue by Jordan St. Sir. I don't know. I don't know how to say that. So here we go. Let's check out this song. I have, I'm pretty sure I've not heard the song. Could be wrong. I have been wrong before, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I've been dead. Cried those loud prayers Like Job on his knees Saying, Lord, I need more than a little help I like how the lyrics are on this one. I've been surrounded Felt fear on all sides Like Daniel and the lions I know when I fight I don't fight by myself Alright, so that's first one. <laughs> we started the chorus a little bit there. Alright, I like how they did the lyric video here with the handwriting on this uh, background. I think it looks pretty cool. Alright, I've been desperate. I mean, oh, I've been desperate. Cried those loud prayers. Alright, so this is from himself. Okay. Like Job on his knees, saying, Lord, I need more than a little help. All right. So, the author is, um, he talks about how he's uh, been he's been desperate. He's had those times of prayer where he's uh, crying out to the Lord for help. Uh, and then he gives us an example similar to Job. Uh, who is on his knees begging the Lord, saying, I need more than just a little help. I need a lot of help. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the truth? We all find ourselves there. All right, so that's where we are so far. I like how he's referring to Job, uh, the story. All right. I've also, I've been surrounded. So this is a second idea. Felt fear on all sides. So he feels like um, he's been surrounded by fear. There's no way out. And so like Daniel in the lion's, <laughs> I wish he had just said lion's den. You could still say that. Like Daniel and the lion's den. I know when I fight, I don't fight by myself. You could, you could fit it in there. It, there's no reason not to. Like Daniel in the lion's den, I know when I fight, I don't fight by myself. All right, so here we have the turnaround. So even though... Even though he's been surrounded by fear on all sides even though that's the case like Daniel in the lion's den he knows that he doesn't fight 
by himself when he fights. And so that's the uh, that's the turnaround. E- d- despite all those things that I have been through, I know, I have faith that I don't fight by myself. All right, let's keep going to the chorus. Oh. When I needed rescue, Jesus, you came through. Oh, in my heart is season, your promise held true. And every time I've given in, Lord, you've proven again that you're still my Savior now. Jesus, you came. All right, to the chorus. When I needed a rescue, Jesus, so we have directional, talking to Jesus. So when when I needed, the author, when I needed a rescue, Jesus, you, you came through. All right, in other words, Jesus rescued him. <laughs> uh in my hardest season, your promise, what? It held true. Okay, what was his promise? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I assume that's the promise he's referring to. And every time I've given in, Lord, you've proven again that... Uh, that you're still my Savior now. All right, so and then we have the the, the flip flop. Jesus, you came through uh, when I needed a rescue. All right, so that's interesting. I like I like what uh, I like what it's saying here. So we're directional to Jesus, speaking to God, um, and he we're talking about the the faithfulness uh, of God to rescue and deliver and save His people. I like it. Okay. Moving on, verse two. It's just in your nature to step in and say, because of you, Jesus, when I've been defeated, I know you'll pull me out of my grave when I need it. That was a short verse. I don't know why people don't do like full verses anymore, or full second verses, or. Usually it's the third verse that gets chopped up, to be fair. All right, it's just in your nature to step in and save. So what he's saying is Jesus, or God, is of the nature of uh, being a savior, one that saves. It's part of the nature of God. And really it's a subsection of God's love. God being love. God is love. And because of God being love, he is a savior. All right, because of you, comma, Jesus, when I've been defeated, I know you'll pull me out of my grave. All right, so I think we have a couple things uh, meant here. Um, I think we have, number one, we have salvifically. Uh, I've been defeated because I was dead in my sin. And so Christ has rescued us out of the grave. And then uh, we have here the future tense. So this is past. I've been defeated. In the past, when I was defeated, I, he didn't say I knew you'd, you'd pull me out of the grave. Um but he switches to the the future i i know, or the present i know you will pull me out of the grave and so um we have this past tense future tense here which is really interesting the way he does it and so i think because of that we can actually apply this to his original salvation i think we can apply this to our stumbling and falling now as we uh continue to live in a, in a world where we are being sanctified and are no are not yet sinless but i also think that this is the future defeated when i'm when my physical body fails and i die the grave is not the end so i think we can actually imply 
because of the way this is worded, all three of those, the, the past, the present, and the future, um, resurrections, uh, different types of resurrection, sure, but <coughs> so we're no longer dead in sin. We have been pulled up. Uh, even when we fall, God doesn't let it um, keep us down. And then in the future, when we, if if Christ has an hour returned and we uh, bodily die, it's not it's not the end for us. I think that's pretty cool. Um, maybe I'm reading into it, but that's how I read it. <laughs> you get to kind of see how I read through songs. All right, and then we have the chorus again. Proven again. Jesus. Okay. Oh, it's going to change. That's interesting. You are peace within disaster. You are calm inside the storm. I have seen you move and I believe you will do what you did before. You are peace within disaster. All right, and that's the bridge. You are peace within disaster. You are calm inside the storm. So we think like a hurricane. There's a calm center. Uh, despite the, the, the storm or disaster of the sinful fallen world, Christ is peace. Jesus is calm. All right. So now he says, I have seen you move, and I believe you will do what you did before. And so this here, he's putting faith, he's putting trust in the promises of God because God has been faithful in the past. And that is kind of the message of the Bible, is that God has always been faithful despite Israel failing over and over again and being unfaithful god was faithful to them even though the church was unfaithful to god and and acted like fools god was faithful to us as well so when you are unfaithful and you fall and you find yourself in trouble because of your own sin or the or the fallen nature of the world god is faithful that's a beautiful thing so uh here the author is turning in faith, I believe because of, because he has seen what Christ has done before. That's in the scripture. So he's, he's read the scripture. He's seen what Jesus has done. And he believes that Christ will act in the same way that he has acted in the past. He will bring about the, the promises that he has made. What's the next promise we're waiting for? For Christ to return. Uh, Christ will save us if we call out to him, and he will return in glory. And so that's the uh, that's how I'm going to interpret that there. And then that repeats, and then we have the chorus again. And then we have the chorus again. All right, let's let's hop over to worship guidelines. Directional. All right, so this is directed to God. Um, it's not directed to the audience it's it's a prayer if you will to god which is interesting because when we first started i actually was curious who this was going to be directed to because he starts talking about as if he's talking to the audience hey i've been there before you're, you're going through tough times while i've been there too but actually he's talking to jesus i was like whoa that's pretty cool like he's talking to jesus about all the things that he's gone through in the past and what is how does it end i believe you will do what you've done before. I believe I trust you to work out good in my life because that's what you promised to do. So directional, I love it. Um, it's directed to Jesus specifically, the second person of the Trinity, um, to Christ. Musically repeatable. I think it's pretty simple. It's not not too difficult. Um, theologically sound. I think there's some good stuff in this. Um, we have a promise uh, that believing in the promises of god we have some references to the old testament that i really like you know he's putting himself in the place of job and of uh, daniel and uh we kind of have an implication of how god delivered those men out of their troubles and the implication that 
Christ will do what he did before and deliver us from our troubles. Um, so I think there's some really rich uh, ideas in there. It talks about how God is a, a, the type of God that is salvific. God is, by nature, a savior. Uh, I really like that. Uh, some good stuff in there. So theologically sound, I think it's pretty good. Um, the Bob test. Um, I think because of how how deeply he ties it to the Bible, I'm, I'm going to give it a, a, a full marks on, on this. Even though you could probably say, like, he doesn't invoke the, the Father or the, or the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't need that in every song. Uh, and it's clear that he's talking to Jesus because he actually says Jesus. Uh, you can't you can't complain about that, you know, <laughs> since so many so many uh, writers don't even say the name Jesus very often. Um, they'll just say my Lord or my God or whatever, you know. Um, I I like when we actually use the name of God, Jesus. You know, uh, I think that's really great. So, Bob Tess, I think it I think it passes pretty well. Um, artistic license. I don't remember anything that, that I didn't like. The chorus isn't my favorite. Um, since I guess we're going to artistic license, I it's okay. Um, but it is a prayer, so it doesn't bother me too much. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I do, um, I don't think there's anything artistically that I have a problem with. Uh, I think the chorus is fine. Uh, the, the verses are really good, and I like the bridge as well. Uh, the chorus was okay. It sounded fine. The words were fine. I didn't have any problems with it. Um, but it, it wasn't the, um... Like, usually the chorus is, like, the focus of the song. For me, the verses are definitely the focus of the song. Uh, that's where I'm at. It's the, the verses are just a lot more rich than the chorus is. Um, the chorus is fine. Don't get me wrong. I just prefer the verses uh, to the chorus. I'm, I'm not saying anything bad about the, about the chorus. Um, congregational verse personal. This is a tough one. I'm not going to lie. Um, I definitely think I would probably listen to this for personal worship. Definitely. I guess the question comes in, is this useful for congregational? And you might be like, well, he said every, everything's so glowing a review for everything else. Here's my problem with it. It's not, doesn't, it seems very personal uh, in the way that it's written. And by, by, by nature, congregational worship is not a personal thing. It can have personal aspects to it, but by nature, congregational worship is congregational. <laughs> There's more than just one person. And so it's hard to um, – it's hard to, in my mind, use songs that are so like personal focused uh, on this. Um yeah, so I'm not going to hate a, a church that, that sing, sings this song. I might even sing this song in Congregational. I mean, if I went to a church and, and they were playing this song, I would definitely sing along with it. I think it's really good. Um, but I don't know that it really incorporates the congregational nature of congregational worship, if that makes sense. So... I would I would not complain if we sang this song, but if I had to choose, I would probably sing a different song just to to have that congregational uh, aspect. But I suppose if I were the worship leader or the music leader and somebody uh, asked to sing this song, maybe I would, especially if it was one of the pastors because they just it really meant a lot to a bunch of people in the church. It wouldn't bother me to, to do it. So I'm on the fence. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that this is good enough to bypass the congregational, the, the fact that it's more of a personal song? Or do you think that, uh, nope, it's not close enough to congregational for me to sing? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm, I'm torn. I think I think both are good arguments. 
I'm not real. This is one where I'll say definitely. I think this is a good personal worship song. I would. I, I'm not sure on the congregational. Might be. This is the first song that I wasn't sure about. <laughs> um, maybe. Maybe I'll come back to it in the times and leave a comment and say, "Hey, this was definitely a, per, a personal or definitely a congregational." You know, I don't know. We'll see. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'd love to hear your ideas. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I, I really appreciate it. Again, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you join the family. Just talk about everything worship and review a lot of <laughs> Christian music videos. Thanks for, for coming. appreciate you. Peace.